Your response to President Trump's decision to withdraw from that June 6th summit in Singapore with North Korea leader Kim Jong-un. Well, these kind of speed bumps are, uh, are not unusual in this sort of thing. This is a the, the size of this and the complexity of it is uh, is absolutely stunning. And uh, I know a lot of people think, well, the two get together, shake hands, sing kumbaya, and it's over. That's not how these things go. Uh, it is it is to be expected uh, that you're going to have speed bumps along the way, and uh, occasionally you'll, you'll get uh, set back. But look, the, the basics haven't changed here. Uh, Kim Jong-un has not walked back his original statements of wanting to talk about denuclearizing the uh, Korean Peninsula. And uh, and that's what started all this. Uh, this whole thing is in Kim Jong-un's hands. Uh, he wh Whatever road he chooses to go down, we will do what is necessary to respond to that. It's his choice, absolutely. He made, in my judgment, a very wise choice to put on the table, look, let's talk about denuclearization. That was a good thing for him, for the Korean Peninsula, for America, for the world. And uh, none of that has changed. But uh, And the president has said, the door's open, uh, he's uh, willing to talk, and uh, and I, I'm cautiously optimistic that, uh, that we will proceed to talk. So you agree with the president's decision to withdraw from this? Yeah, look, the, the reasons uh, he was, I was with the president this morning when the media asked him, well, what, why did this happen? And he uh, declined to uh, to indicate, which is a good thing. Uh, you, you don't want to have, if you do have uh, differences, it's not good to be litigating them out in the open before you've ever met. And so uh, I agree with him. Uh, he made the judgment based on the information that uh, he had that uh, that he would uh, pull back uh, from the 12th. Respectfully, I was there too at the White House, and I find it interesting in the last 24 hours in particular when you have a top North Korean diplomat referring to a sitting U.S. vice president as a quote-unquote political dummy, and you also have the president engaging in the past several months on Twitter referring to North Korea leader Kim Jong-un as a quote-unquote little rocket man. Is that type of rhetoric helpful? To of course not, but let's back up. Uh, the, you'll notice that the president's rhetoric has been entirely different since, and I can put a moment to it, and that moment is the closing ceremonies, exactly halfway through the closing ceremonies at the Olympics. I was sitting in the closing ceremonies, and so were the, the uh, State Department people I was with and the White House people I was with. All our cell phones went off at the same time, and the South Koreans notified us that uh, Kim Jong-un has said that he wanted to talk, and he wanted to talk about denuclearization of the, of the Korean Peninsula. That that was a game changer. That that uh, that that changed things dramatically. Now, look, there's so, there's thousands of people talking about this. Hundreds of thousands of people. When people talk, sometimes they say things that are interpreted uh, not the way they're meant, and uh, and so as a result, of that right. you'll get you'll you'll get dust up. Right. Like With regards to the president's letter talking about the the the, the U.S. nuclear arsenal. Is that ratcheting it up? It clearly is a response to North Korea doing the same thing, but a lot of people yeah. might look at that and be concerned. Yeah, I would urge you not to focus on one sentence in that letter. That letter was very, very well drafted. It was well thought out, uh, and um, it, you have to take it as a whole, not taking a sentence out of it. If I were going to pick a sentence out of that, I'd, I'd pick the sentence out where the president said, look, the door is still open, uh, the ball's in your court. We still would like to reach a, an agreement on that. That's what I would take out of that letter. Which model should the U.S. follow in terms of which denuclearization model for, for Good the question. Korean Peninsula? Yeah. None. This is a uh, transaction that will be between the President of the United States, President Trump, and uh, Kim Jong-un, the chairman. It will be their transaction. These are all different. They are all unique. And I think when you start talking about a model, then someone will pick something out of one of the models that they don't like or that didn't work and, uh, and focus on that. What, what, the, these two parties need to be given the space to be able to get together and to weigh these things and see if they can't come to uh, a decision on how this should be handled without reference to anything that's happened before and without reference to any model. North Korea's economy is essentially collapsing, dwindling, putting it fast. Any economist that has access to any data coming out of there would argue that. What role do our allies play here? Because when more than 90 percent of exports and imports from North Korea come to China, for example, or directly tied to China, what role did the Chinese need to play here? It can't just be the U.S. and North Korea. No, of course not. And uh, the good news is on that is virtually everyone in the world is of the same frame of mind that North Korea should not be developing uh, nuclear weapons. And given that, that is an objective. Once everybody agrees 
carries that objective and everybody works in good faith to reach that objective, you get the kind of pressure that's on North Korea right now. It, it, things are bad there. There's no question about it. And, and that, what that does is it cost, causes people to stop and think, what are we doing here? You know, what's causing this and uh, how can we do things better? So that's a good thing. So the speculation that the Chinese, for example, were using the Korean summit as a, a ploy in trade talks is not what you're what you're hearing. Pure speculation. Pure speculation. Yeah, pure speculation. And Look, the, the president, I, if you were in the room this morning, you saw when he walked through that door, he was as somber as I've seen him in a long, long time. You also noticed that he didn't go off script when he was talking about this. Uh, he was, they had a prepared statement uh, that was similar to the letter, but longer in draft. He stayed uh, right with that. The tone was the same. The message was the same. And uh, he takes this very seriously and, uh, and believes this uh, and hopes this can get done. Senator, when you look at the political volatility index, for example, we noticed some spikes upon any news of North Korea. Now, there was some speculation in the gold market, for example, about what was going on in the Korean Peninsula. But I want to take this in the, the minute and a half or so that we have left, just with a final question about what exactly is this administration all in lockstep? So when I covered, for example, uh, sec former Secretary Tillerson, there appear to be some differences between President Trump uh, and that Secretary of State. But now with the new Secretary of State, Pompeo, it appears that everyone is, is, is very much on the same page. Is that a correct assessment? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Mike Pompeo is very close to the president. And we have on the Senate side here, Foreign Relations Committee, we have a tremendous relationship with uh, not only Mike Pompeo, but also the president. Look, I was here all through eight years of the Obama administration. The, the the Constitution is very clear about uh, advice of the Senate. Uh, we were never asked for advice, and uh, when we tried to offer it, it was uh, uniformly rejected in the vast majority of cases. Th this president, uh, th this president calls for advice regularly from us. I, you know, I've, I've been up there three, four times in the last two weeks. So, uh, well, anytime you talk to him, feel free to tell us what you guys <laughs> talked about. Well, I'll, I'll probably pass on that. Thank you so <laughs> well, much.